everyone. Uh, welcome to a demonstration of centralized security and governance with data virtualization. So data virtualization offers a single logical point of access for applications, making it a good place to enforce security restrictions defined in terms of the canonical model with really fine granularity. As you can see in the diagram here, Denodal allows for centralizing security across multiple consuming applications to multiple information sources. So a reporting tool or a web service can access the same view, in this case of employee, um, which is made up of data from multiple sources. Uh, the Denodo platform includes its own user and role-based authentication and authorization mechanism, but Denodo can also delegate authentication to external LDAP or Active Directory server, so there's no need to define users within the built-in user management system. The permissions can be assigned uh, to both roles and users, and you can assign schema-wide permissions, which are just general read and write across Denodo views and different databases, as well as data-specific permissions. With data-specific permissions, Denodo offers really fine-grained permissioning all the way down to the cell level. So you can apply both role-based and column-based security, including the possibility of masking and redacting specific cells, and we're going to see that during the demo today. For the most part, uh, Denodo row-based security doesn't require any coding, and it can all be done graphically with the administration tool, which is also what we're going to see during this demo. So let's take a look at what we're going to what we're going to be seeing. So during the demo, we're going to apply permissions over a view of employees, and then we're going to consume that view uh, through Tableau and a REST web service. We will view uh, employees from the perspective of three end users, from just a marketing employee, from the marketing director, and then also from an HR administrator. Depending on the user privileges, the sensitive field of salary will be redacted and social security will be matched. So you can see an example right here of what our final output will be like. Social security is masked only the last four digits are returned, and we'll also be redacting some salary information depending on the condition. So let's just go right to the demo and see the tool itself. All right, at this point, you should all be looking at the administration tool, which is used by developers to create models and the administrators to configure the server and set permissions. What we're viewing right now is a view of employees. If we execute it, we'll see all the data returned um, about our employees. We're going to apply security over this view. The first step is to create a projection on top of this view that uses a function to mask the XSN, returning only the last four digits. We have this view created right here. So if we come here to Employee Overview and we edit it and come to the Output tab, we can see that our Social Security is using a, a function that masks the XSN. And if we execute it, you can see whereas before we were seeing the whole Social Security number, now we only see the last four digits. Depending on the role, certain users will only have access to view this uh, representation of employees with a map that's that. The next step is to apply permissions over the views. So um, let's move over to our role management. We come here to administration, and we go into role management. This is where the administrators can view existing roles, create new roles, and assign privileges. Privileges can be assigned on a user-by-user -user basis. Um, let me actually, I have something else. So this, these are all the roles that you see here. So the privileges to these roles can be signed on a user-by-user -user basis, but the management of permissions is actually easier with roles, right? Because if the privileges of a role are changed, then the changes are applied to all the users that belong to that role. Your users can have more than one role, um, and in addition, roles can be assigned to other roles, so you can have role inheritance of permissions, which will help you not apply the same permissions and privileges over and over and over again. There are two ways to create roles. Uh, the first way is just to create role one by one by clicking new here, giving it a name, and assigning permissions. You can also import roles from an existing LDAP server, um, so you like your active directory, so you can utilize a group cell structure if you already have one. 
You can see that I've already created the role for HR manager, marketing employee, and marketing manager. Let's look at the privileges for our most restrictive role, which is marketing employee. So we select that one and we say find privileges. At this level, we can see all the databases that we want to find privileges over. Um, marketing employees can only connect to our global sales uh, PL data source, which is the one that we've created their, our HR views in. And we're only giving them connect privileges. They can't see everything in that database. If we come in a little bit closer, so we're going to edit more advanced privileges inside this database, we can see the different views that are available to sign privileges over. Marketing employees can only read two human resources views. That's um, address HIPAA, which I'll get to in a little bit, and also employee overview. They only have read permissions over those. Um, also, you can see here that the employee overview has a row restriction, a view restriction applied to it. So let's check that one out. We're going to select that view and say assign restrictions. We can see the restriction right here. Let's edit it so you can, you can see the details of it. So with um, this view restriction, what happens is the takes a condition, and depending on the output of the condition, it decides to, what, to either reject a row to reject the row if a sensitive field is provided, um, or to uh, redact data in a sensitive field. In this case, um, this restriction is getting the user who is querying the email address, and it's checking if that returned email in the tuple coming from the data set is, if that is equal to the user's email. If it is not equal to the user's email, it's going to redact the salary information for that tuple. Basically, what this is doing is, is making sure that marketing employees can only see their own salary and not the salary of others. So this is how we set it up. We put the condition in. We say max the sensitive field of salary. So let's see how our marketing employees actually can view the data. We're going to go to Tableau, where we have um, a marketing employee, uh, B. Yang, connected uh, to Denoto. So he's connecting B. Yang, he's connecting here to Denoto. And he's created a report over the employee. You can see that the SSN is masked, as we did in our projection. And also, all the salary information is redacted, except for his own, which he can see. So that's an example of um, how the security is used with a consuming application. OK, let's see the privileges of someone of a different user, um, a marketing manager role. We come back to BDP, we'll close out of this. Let's look at our marketing manager. Uh, okay, so if we come here to assign privileges, we see that our marketing manager has connect privileges to global sales, just like the employee. Um, he can also only read the employee uh, data and the address data. He also has, uh, a marketing manager also has restrictions over the employee data, but it's different than the one before. So let's take a look at that. We say assign restrictions, um, and let's take a look at the restrictions. Oops, that's creating a new one. I'm going to edit this. Okay, so in this case, the restriction is checking the department of the return tuple. If it, the department is marketing, then the salary is returned in the clear. Otherwise, the salary is rejected. So we're making sure that marketing managers can see all the marketing employee salaries, but not the salaries of other employees in the department. Again, if we come here to um, a different Tableau workbook, uh, in this workbook, the, uh, we're connecting through um, John Dean, who is a uh, marketing manager. And we come in here, and we can see, again, that the salaries are only returned for those departments that are marketing. The rest are redacted. And the Social Security is still maxed. Finally, you have a higher level of uh, privileges or more privileges for your HR administrators. So let's just take a look at that. So here we have our HR manager. Let's see the privileges. Again, they have connect privileges to this database. And if we look at the HR views, you can see that they have read and write privileges over the views because this is their domain. They're allowed to um, see what's happening with their employees. So they have read write privileges, they have no restrictions, they can see even our just most um, clear version of the employee data. So if you come here to the report and look at the reporting tool, they have one more view that they can view, 
uh, that they can query over, and if they look at it, they can see the full SSN and the full SAR. So um, these, this is just an example of connecting from Tableau, but because the security is centralized, um, these privileges will affect any other client that these users try to log in for. Um, for instance, um, if we try and connect through, well, we've created a REST web service over our employee overview um, view. So we publish that as a web service. And if we consume that, for instance, through Postman, we're connecting to that web service and we consume it via BA, you can see that the same restrictions and permissions are applied. SSN in the return JSON is, um, is uh, maxed out, and the salary is nulled out unless we can find, uh, unless Yang is viewing his own. So the same restrictions are applied there. If we go ahead and we change the, um, the, uh, the username to John Dean, who is a marketing uh, manager, and we resend the request, Let's look at it in JSON format so you can view the data a little bit more clearly. We can see, again, the restrictions are applied. The salary is going to be null until we scroll down and we see a marketing, um, a marketing employee, and the SSN are still maxed out. So security is centralized. The different consuming applications, um, you don't have to set up security in that consuming application. It's just going to keep using the privileges they find in through Denodo. Um, I have one more example of using security in Denodo. This example is going to show how Denodo can comply with HIPAA rules. Uh, HIPAA safe harbor rules dictate what data can be shared and what data must be de-identified. For instance, um, there might be limits on showing a patient's aid, or depending on um, the population of certain zip codes, they might need to be masked or redacted in different ways. HIPAA rules can change over time. New census data, for instance, might change policies, which makes um, which makes you have to change the way you mask or change the projection of the data. Uh, with a single point of control data access and protection, it's going to be easy to adopt to these changes. As you saw with the role management um, or even just projection, using Denodo, you can easily change these permissions rather than having to redo any of the rules on replicated data. So as an example, I just have a view that returns addresses. And depending on the user's role, uh, you're going to mask the zip codes returns. Only the first three digits um, can be returned to employees. They can only see the first three digits of a zip code. Also, in certain areas, the population is low enough that returning the first three digits is still a security risk. So for those subset of areas, you have to completely mask the zip code returning, for instance, 000. So they don't even have any information about the zip code. So to apply this rule, we change the projection of zip codes to use a case statement and a map. So let's take a look at zip code here. This is the address view. Come here to zip code. And this checks, first of all, what is the query, the user who's querying, what is their, um, their role? If it's a, like for instance, a marketing employee, then they're going to have to map the zip code. It also checks the zip codes with a map, and if one of those zip codes are in one of the areas that has to be completely mapped, it will turn a completely mapped zip code. So I've logged into the administration tool in a new instance as our marketing employee, BBA, and he has access to read to query address HIPAA. So if we execute this, we can see that the zip codes, only the first three um, the only the first three digits are returned. And if we short by zip code, we can see that there's a certain number that returns 000 because you're not allowed to see what the first three digits are. So that's an example of applying like a HIPAA rule on top. So with this demo, you've seen how we can use Denodo to centralize security using role-based permissions to mask and redact fields, and how we can also take that security and apply it across multiple consuming applications. Thanks for watching.